peaceful on the surface, but there's definitely an underlying threat that doesn't want to make itself known. Russell Johnson is one of a handful of Americans who inherited land along the U.S.-Mexico border and all the headaches that come with it. This is what Border Patrol refers to as 19 Canyon, and in the past they've advised us to stay out of here as much as possible because of the remoteness and, and it's a very popular crossing spot and very dangerous. Our cattle run back here, this is part of our ranch. This ranch, the cattle business, this wild Western identity has been passed down through four generations. But the perils of living on this eight mile stretch of border are also woven into the family's history. We live with this 24 seven. We get calls in the middle of the night that we've had a vehicle drive through and the border fence is down. You have to keep yourself at a constant heightened awareness. If Russell, his wife Brandy, and their two kids lived somewhere else, they might be able to talk to some sort of homeowners association to beef up security. But out here, they're at the mercy of the federal government. People tell us we should move if it's so bad. I sit here and I see stories about gang violence in cities or gun violence in cities. Like I would definitely be for them having better safety and security in their own neighborhood. According to Border Patrol, illegal alien apprehensions here in the El Paso sector reached a 10 year high this year. So what do ranchers see as the solution? We would like to see a physical barrier. That's, that's what's needed. The next is boots and technology on the ground. But along with that's going to have to come some immigration reform. And that's what's frustrating to us is, is this issue has become so politicized and we feel like we're just the pawns sitting in the middle of this thing. President Trump abandoned the wall. The wall is an immorality. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. But they do feel Trump is sympathetic to their concerns. We're going to build the wall, folks. We're going to build it. Trump came out saying that it, there was a problem and nobody else had talked about there being a problem before. There was so much backlash saying that he was just making this up that it was kind of like, no, it's, it's really happening. The Johnsons aren't against immigration. They even want the U.S. to bring back a guest worker program. Russell just wants the illegal activity on his property to stop. Off in the distance on that on that highest peak, the smugglers utilize that spot to, to monitor war patrol activity. So you could potentially have smugglers, a criminal element, on your property using your ranch as a lookout point. Yes. That's how does that make you feel? Well, it doesn't it doesn't give you any comfort at all knowing that anywhere on your ranch you've got criminal activity going on. All that separates the Johnson Ranch from Mexico in some spots is a barbed wire fence. In other areas, there's a barrier like this that's supposed to stop vehicles. According to Russell, it isn't always successful. What the smugglers have done is, is drive around over here. They'll either cut the fence or untie the wire and step on it and drive across onto the north side. Some parts of the border are more porous than others. That's because back in 2006, bipartisan legislation led to the construction of barriers around big border cities like El Paso and San Diego. When paired with more agents and technology, those barriers can be effective in reducing apprehensions. But over time, traffic has shifted to the rural areas where there's not much of a deterrent. And that's where you are right now. Basically, you are in the area where the traffic is being funneled to, right? Yes, the the uh, the traffic that's legitimately trying to get north without being caught. That's what we're seeing on our our ranch right now. They're coming out here to the weak points to try to get in. According to Customs and Border Protection, the lion's share of cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine comes through the southern border. Although most of these drugs are seized at ports of entry and not the gaps in between. And in the past few months, we've seen a record number of asylum seekers and family units turning themselves in in this area. Families require more resources for processing at ports of entry. And that means fewer boots on the ground. What that's doing is, is leaving our border wide open. Their number one priority is keeping every working computer manned back at their station so that they can process these people. It's not securing the border. I wanted to get another perspective, so I drove into the heart of New Mexico's boot heel, a hot spot for both legal and illegal traffic. A wall by itself is probably not going to accomplish what they intend for it to do. 
We need some kind of barrier, and then we need the Border Patrol on the border. William Hurt greets everyone with skepticism and at least one firearm. You're on your own out here. If something goes down, help most likely isn't on the way, at least not for a few hours. Do you feel like you're living in fear here on the border? I don't know if you'd call it fear, but there's a constant concern. You can't be scared all the time or you'd drive yourself crazy. But there is, there's always a worry. There's the big fears for my family. This is what he's afraid of. Border Patrol captured this footage of armed smugglers escorting a mother and child across the Arizona border, one state over. The Hurt Ranch neighbors a busy port of entry in New Mexico, Antelope Wells. Just a few weeks after our visit, Border Patrol apprehended close to 700 people there over the course of three days. And William's property is a popular pathway. Most of the traffic that you see on your property, is, is it drive throughs We get a lot of people that come through and they'll, they'll backpack their dope through and come go up some of these canyons. They're one of their favorite tricks is just kind of skirt the foot of the mountain. William's wife came over legally from Mexico when they got married. They actually stood on opposite sides of the border as they exchanged vows. And like the Johnsons, they're on the same page about stopping illegal immigration. I've lived here for 36 years now, and I've really never been more concerned for the safety of my family and, and for the ranch than I have been the last six months. Some studies, like this one from the Pew Research Center, show the unauthorized immigrant population in the U.S. is at a 10-year low. Critics of additional border security point to that as proof that there is no crisis down here. But the total number of apprehensions along the U.S. border continues to climb. These ranchers remember previous surges and what they cost. A lot of this is going to be from, you know, the 2005 to 2008 time frame. So how much property damage would you estimate you've had to incur over the past 10 years? Tens upon tens of thousands of dollars. Between fence repairs, uh, pasture loss, we've lost several cattle. My thoughts are, is why wait until we have a problem? Why wait for this to come back before we do something about it? Let's close the gate before it is an issue. The government is breaking ground on a new section of border wall on the Johnson Ranch soon, paid for by Trump's emergency declaration. On the other side of this mountain right here is where, where uh, the beginning of the, the portion of pedestrian barrier Trump's going to be building. And you're really excited about this. We are. Um, we feel that, that it's, it's very necessary and it's a start. If you leave any hole in the, in the border, like we have here with like just the barbed wire fence, the, the smugglers and cartels in Mexico will exploit that and use it to its full capacity. You would think life out here would be simple, and on the surface, it is. But under the veneer of serenity lie some uncomfortable truths. I have no doubt that these people are looking for a better life and that the, the conditions in the U.S. are far better than, than the ones that they're living in now. We're one of the most prosperous countries in the world. Whether or not that wall or, or barrier gets put into place, we have to directly live with the impacts of that. It affects our lives and it affects our business. And we, we wish that they take the politics out of it and come together, you know, Congress and the Senate come together and, and solve this issue. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.